What is up beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here from CLG Lifestyle. Hope you guys are feeling blessed and grateful to be alive. Some people did not wake up today, this morning, and some people are not going to go to bed tonight. So that's enough of a reason, in my opinion, for us to find even a smallest opportunity to be grateful. If you've not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, do so right now. That way you can stay connected to what it is that I'm doing as a life coach slash lifestyle influencer slash virtual friend. You know, I'm here to help you be your best self, to encourage you, to remind you that you are special in the eyes of God, that God made you in his image and likeness. And as a result, there is purpose for your life. This purpose is only discovered as a result of your relationship with God. I know this for a fact and for the truth in that this is how I became into what it is that I'm doing now. This is the reason why I have vision and purpose and believe for greatness uh, in the future when it comes to just my life, which, you know, I didn't always have, you know, I always believed that there was something more to life or that I was created to do and be something, but that was never really understood to the capacity or, or the way that I understand now until I reconnected with God, glory to God. And as a result, you know, I've just been on this path, this intentional path, and I'm just so grateful to God to be given the opportunity to do life again, to do life with God. Um, my God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My God is the one who gave his only begotten son so that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This is he, Jesus Christ. And so glory to God for just being God and Godding, right? And, and giving me the opportunity to be enlightened and to be reborn. You know, I became a born again believer in 2023 officially. So I received Christ in 2016. I had a radical experience with God where, you know, God gave me his spirit. You know, I believed I was baptized with the Holy Spirit in 2016. And from there began a spiritual growth that, you know, God had already planned for me before the foundations of the world. However, my water baptism wasn't until 2023. So, uh, so glory to God again, just, you know, just for my transformation, for my, for my path and just for his wooing love that has kept me, um, until I was able to, and still continue to continues to keep me, but God's love kept me until, you know, I was able to have my own personal experience with God as, or rather than relying on other people's experiences and interpretation, which was not a benefit in my case, right? Uh, and I know that may be the case for you where you've relied on other people's interpretations and other people's experiences with God to determine who and what God can be in your life. And, you know, to keep it short and sweet, you know, people, you know, create the God of their own understanding, right? And, you know, be it unto you according to your faith. And I believe, uh, God gives us an opportunity to get to know him one-on-one -on -one. so that way whatever it is that you know that you've acquired along the way whatever it is that was generationally passed down to you in the form of you know mother and father's belief systems family belief system whatever you believed culturally and societally you know none of that really matters it, it really doesn't matter when you have now come into God's grace or the knowing of God's grace. Because like I said, he's been gracing for as long as the earth has been in, in existence. God has been showering humanity, the universe, creation with his grace. And so I believe when you come into the to the knowledge of this or the knowing of this, this just is just a whole new world, a whole new experience, a whole new life. And I'm just someone that I believe God is using as a vessel, as his servant, I am first and foremost a son of God, child of God, born again, born of the spirit. God is using my life as a living billboard of his goodness, as a walking testimony, as, you know, a manifestation of his glory, of the person that he already knew I would be in Christ Jesus. It was only a matter of time for his time. You know, as the Lord says, only God knows the timing of when everything, when it comes to the end of the ages and everything that revolves around God's restoration plan. When it comes to eternal life with Christ, uh, only God knows that the date and the time. And so only God knows the date and the time of your death, the date and the time of whatever encounter you need to have with God, the date and the time of your harvest, the date and the time of when you are going to do the work that you need to do to rise up 
and arise into the person that God has always called you to be. So this takes one acknowledgement or an awareness of what's been going on. We know scripturally the word of God says that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. So people can't necessarily, oh, excuse me, they will not be able to see what's going on spiritually unless they receive an awakening. The song Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Song, uh, How Sweet the Sound, that saved a wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Amen. So now God empowers us to see through his spirit the truth about what life is, what his promises are for us, what his expectations are for us, and ultimately what the consequences are for sin and 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 just living a life in rebellion towards God. But you know, have no fear, you know, I don't know what your belief systems is or are or what's been told to you about God, but the God I serve is a loving and merciful and compassionate God, but he's also a God that has to be about the business because the human nature, if you let it run wild, if you let it do what it do, is going to run amok and just put, you know, just destroy everything ultimately, you know, which it has done for and continues to do. But the grace of God, you know, is able to cover areas, you know what I'm saying, that um that had it not been the grace of God, there go I, or had it not been the grace of God, you know, what would this, what will this, what would this world be? So even if it's bad as, as it is now, even in it, in its current state of condition, you know, still, you know, glory to God because he is keeping us. He's keeping his people alive. He's keeping his people safe. You know, the word of God talks about the remnant, uh, excuse me, the, the Israelites when they had lived in Goshen and everything that was going on in Egypt as far as the plagues and the destruction, you know, they were under, Egypt was under God's punishment. The word of God says in Goshen, you, you know, there was not a sound. In other words, you could hear a pin drop. Amen. That's how peaceful God is able to make your life and environment and community if you were to just be obedient and, and be a man or woman after his own heart. You know, God is able to keep the uh, the wicked under judgment while making the righteous prosper simultaneously. This was manifested, or should I say, this was experienced during the pandemic. There were people who were suffering and losing it all. Death, decay, disease, you know, just running through the mud, you know, just everything was just being depleted. And to, for some, you know, they've never regained that position that they had, you know, before the pandemic. And on the other end, you had a lot of, from what I know, God's people, they would give testimonies about how God prospered them in a time and during a time where it was not possible. And it's not possible based on statistics, based on measurements, based on practicality. It's not, it wasn't possible. But when you have the spirit of God who is all knowing, all powerful and is, you know, he's a supernatural God. He's able to make a way out of no way. So this is, you know, this, so again, so God, you know, is, is worthy to be praised and he wants us to have a beautiful, wonderful life. And he's going to use the people, places and things that he has prepared to encourage you and to remind you of how good he is. And when you get to your point of, you know, doing, working for the Lord and he's now entrusting you to inspire his people and encourage his people, you'll have, you know, you'll know what it is what it's like or what it's been for you, especially when it comes to certain themes or topics or issues that humans deal with. When you've overcome it, you'll be able to speak from a place of conviction and a space of truth. This is why God oftentimes have to have us go through certain things. Jesus was only able to successfully be the, you know, the, um, the author and finish of our faith, the guardian of our souls, because he had to take on the composition of a man or human in, in full. He had to go through the experience of a human. He had to experience the consequences of sin, even though he was not a sinner. This was a sacrifice, amen? This was a sacrifice that he made for us. And because of the sacrifice and ultimate obedience to God, he was now rewarded, right? Rewarded with authority and dominion over all things. He was All things was given unto him, the word of God says, as it pleased the Father, because he was obedient. So, just like Jesus, we are the people of God whom God has made. You know, we were with God even before we came into this realm. God had, had already predestined a plan 
and, and, and an opportunity for us to do good works so that not only is his name glorified, but that souls will be saved. The word of God says that greater work shall we do in the name of Jesus. So let's not downplay that. Let's not minimize that. Let's not allow people's lack of faith or mediocre faith or their interpretation of God uh, being limited have you take on that manifestation or you take on that experience. If you've encountered God, which I'm sure you have, or you desire to encounter God, I pray that you, uh, that you prioritize your relationship with God, that you make sure that, you know, if someone is telling you to do something that, and you know it's life-changing, you know it's something that you've been praying for, or it doesn't feel right in your spirit, whatever it is, take it to God. Christ has given us the opportunity to commune with God directly. So we don't need to go to pastor this, bishop this, priest this, sister that, mother, father. No. God has given us free will. God has opened the gates to commune with God, to encounter God through prayer. Um, making sure, you know, the word of God says he would pour out his spirit upon us. The word of God is spirit and life. Okay. He's given us his word. We have to read his word. We have to meditate on his word. We can begin to speak and pray and ask God to help us know truth about who he is so that we grow in the knowledge knowledge and discernment of who he is. Ask God to reveal to us who we are, who I am, so that we can again begin to become, do the things that we need to do spiritually, physically, mentally, intellectually, or academically, relationally, professionally, because God has it all planned out for us. He's done all the heavy work. This is part of the rest that God has promised. In the world, people are, you know, they, they're paying for consultants, they're paying for coaches, they're paying for, they're going through psychological tests, they're going through years and years of school and education to then come to find out that this was not something that they want to do. Neither did they have to pay, a, a, you know, a extraordinary amount of money for, you know, lessons and, and consultations and things that they could have simply just go to God and ask for a strategy. Go to God and ask, you know, how to resolve this issue. Go to God and ask for the resource or whatever it is to give to them so that they can be the blessing that Abraham was promised. The word of God says that Abraham was promised that he's that his that he will be a blessing to the nations. Amen. And that he will make that that he will make his descendants. God said he will make Abraham's Abraham uh, descendants as as plenty as a sand in the seashore. I'm paraphrasing here, but there are promises associated with your identity as a child of God, a descendant of Abraham, a descendant of King David, a a, 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 a descendant of you know the Messiah, which we are because we are born of the Spirit. We're born of are born again. We are adopted. Okay, so I know people use that term adopted in a biological sense, but God's adoption you know, is, is there, there is no, <laughs> there is no limitation or there is no, you know, stipulation other than, of course, receiving Jesus Christ. But there is no, um, there are no, okay. So, you know, like when people, you know, when people who have been adopted, right, sometimes they talk about being adopted into a family where there are biological children, right? Already in the family. But in the family, they'll notice that they're treated differently from, you know, as an adopted child in comparison to the biological child, right? I've seen this as well in my, in my own experiences. You know, I've seen how maybe that they're not doing it intentionally, but you can see the difference in treatment. But God is saying as, glory to God, as adopted children of God, as heirs, of God in Christ Jesus, that we are no different from Christ other than him being the ultimate sacrifice, the Lamb of God, the one who was perfect in, in, in obedience and sinless, right? Other than that, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ in the kingdom, having access to the riches and glory and, and, and the honor, okay, that ultimately was given to, to Jesus Christ. And he, according to the Holy Spirit, dispenses according to the will of God. This is manifested as gifts and talents and abilities and, you know, all power and all knowledge and whatever it is that is needed for you to be successful in your walk, not only with the Lord, but successful in the fulfillment of God's plans for your life. Amen. So, 
With all that being said, I want you to download my ebook. It's called I King Amongst Kings, uh, I King Amongst Kings, a King David Descendant, Affirmations for the King Who's Becoming with Spiritual Insights. This is a book that I wrote in like one night and um, published it and everything in like the same with under eight hours. And it's a book that, again, I believe will help you transform your mind. It's a book I believe in because the tools and the spiritual principles that are in it, I've used and it has gotten me to where I'm at right now. There's much more growth to, to be accomplished, but it's what I believe I've successfully, when I talked about earlier in the video, you know, having to go through certain experience so that when you teach about it, when you talk about it, you um, you are speaking from a place of truth and conviction. And that is really where the fruitfulness comes from. Of course, we stay connected to the vine. That's the only how we're going to be fruitful. But you have to, um, you have to, um, there's certain experiences that you have to go through in order for you to be able to minister to people. So this book is going to help you if you're a man, this is, this was tailor made for men, but if you're large minded enough, you're able to remove the pronouns and just picture yourself as a spirit individual before anything and, and apply those uh, scriptural principles because the affirmations are rooted in scripture. So kingdom men you know we, you've heard the term kingdom men is rising we are rising because god is not playing about his investments he's not playing about his design and his construction of the family of humanity and he is really you know what i'm saying is is really showing up and showing out in this season in this time in this age uh you know as to what well one what he has provided for when it comes to grace to what his expectations are as far as worshiping him in spirit and in truth three just again put, keeping his foot on the devil's neck you know what i'm saying at the end of the day you know the, the enemy has used religion he has used you know different concepts and and belief systems to thwart the plans of god and to make people feel like you know what i'm saying that God doesn't have expectations and standards and a deadline. You know, the deadline we don't necessarily know of, but it is very clear God has a deadline that he alone knows. And, you know, just because, you know, he is continuously dispensing grace and allowing people to wake up with his breath doesn't mean that it gives you another minute, another hour, another day to just do whatever you want. It, this is this is God's grace. It's supposed to turn our hearts towards him. It's supposed to make us repent and turn from our wicked ways because the kingdom of God is here. And because the kingdom of God is here, there is a whole new opportunity for you to do things just differently. This is why, again, I go back up to you about saying consult with God. Discover your relationship with God because God is not the big bad wolf or the bully that so many people try to depict him as. God is love, God is merciful, God is compassion, he's gracious, especially, you know, knowing what the enemy has done when it comes to the destruction of mankind. And God knows where we came from, what we went through. He knows the conditions of our hearts. He knows that sometimes your heart is not repairable. You can't, uh, you cannot, uh, you, you can't necessarily restore a, a heart. God, however, can give you a new heart and a new spirit. That's what he did for me. My heart and, and, and spirit were so broken that it was just, in God's eyes, irreparable. So he gave me a new heart and a new spirit. And this is what happens when you become a born-again believer. You are a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. This is not something that can be understood logically. Or does the human mind have the capacity to understand the things of God? Because his ways are higher and his thoughts are higher. We just have to receive by faith what God is doing and what we ask for because ultimately when when we talk about the the desires of our hearts God gives it to us God gives us the desires of our hearts and when he gives us these desires we now begin to speak it we now begin to do the works that needs to supplement or or complement you know our desires and our vision and the promises of God so definitely download the ebook it's free quick read 16 pages in spiritual insights and affirmations included. Also check out my podcast, the Corwin L. Gilliams podcast. I'm also on social media, CLG Lifestyle, on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and I believe Twitter. 
Also, if you want to support my platform as well, I do have my Cash App link in there as well. Uh, you can do so. So before I close out, I just want to um, say some affirmations with you. And then I will talk to you to you guys uh, soon. So I like to have some, you know, meditative music when I say my affirmations. It just helps with the mood. Hopefully this doesn't get copyrighted. It's not copywritten or it's it's public domain that I can use. So I pray in Jesus' name that you know it is not um it is not banned or anything like that. Nonetheless, we work it out. Anyways, so this is what I listen to, and yeah. And we're going to say some affirmations before I head out, okay? So I like to get, you know, get comfortable, get, you know, get comfortable, feel right. Take a couple deep breaths. Father God, I thank you for all that you've done for me and continue to do for me. You have made me worthy. You have made me strong. You have made me important. You have made me your masterpiece. I am made in your image and likeness. I am your beloved. I am your son. I am your child. I am your servant. I know no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I know that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and never below. I am a lender and not a borrower. It is well with my soul. The favor of God surrounds me as with a shield. The blessing of the Lord maketh me rich and addeth no sorrow. I see myself the way God sees me. I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind. All things have passed away. All things have become new. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. I have the mind of Christ. I've been given a new heart and a new spirit. The blessing of the Lord maketh me rich and addeth no sorrow. The favor of God surrounds me as with a shield. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and never below. I am a lender and not a borrower. I am divinely healthy, wealthy, wise, handsome, and smart. The plans of God are in motion. I am manifesting God's plans for my life. I am in alignment with the will of God for my life. I see what God sees for my life. I hear what God hears for my life. I see myself the way God sees me. This is my season of restoration. This is my season of more. I am doing all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. In Jesus name I say all these things amen beautiful people I am Corwin L. Gilliams from CLG Lifestyle thank you so much for watching talk to you guys soon and stay blessed